the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Japanese government officially announces the release of funds for the resumption of development projects undertaken in Sri Lanka. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka decides to reduce its policy rates by 25 basis points. The stock market is on the rise, recording its second consecutive day of gains following an extended period of losses. And Coca-Cola has increased its annual sales and profit projections, anticipating gains from price increases and a robust advertising campaign. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. After signing the agreement with the Official Creditors Committee, a special press conference to officially announce the release of funds for restarting the projects was held today at Randora Auditorium of the Ministry of Finance. The press conference was held under the chairmanship of Mr. Mizukoshi Hideaki, the Ambassador of Japan, Mr. Tetsuya Yamada, the head of JK Sri Lanka office, and Mr. Mahinda Srivadana, Secretary of the Ministry of Finance. The Japanese government today officially announced the release of funds for the resumption of development projects undertaken in Sri Lanka. A Japanese delegation visiting Sri Lanka recently had lauded the successful completion of country's debt restructuring process, noting that it has paved the way for the resumption of Japanese official development assistance projects. The Japanese delegation had noted that several projects that are currently suspended, including the Bandaranaik International Airport Development Project, the Colombo Port Eastern Terminal Development Project, the Central Expressway Construction, and the digital broadcasting project can be promptly restored. Additionally, the delegation highlighted that potential to resume the light railway transit, which was halted by previous government. They are actively assessing locations to re-implement this project, recognizing its significant potential to alleviate traffic congestion in the Columbus city. The Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhan said that the cash flow provided by debt treatments have resulted freeing up a great degree of fiscal space to prioritize public service and the decision to make immediate disbursements will also support cash flows and interest rates. The cash flow relief provided through this debt treatment frees up a great degree of fiscal space for Sri Lanka to spend on priority public services such as healthcare and education uh, instead of debt service in the short term. This crucial step has now enabled us to reach today's milestone of resumption of disbursement of yen loans. This provides Sri Lanka with fresh financing to support critical infrastructure development, as just mentioned, and also eases the country's fiscal cash flow pressures, which will help keep domestic interest rate moderate and supportive of economic recovery and growth. The resumption of financing will go a long way towards reigniting re sectors such as construction and supporting uh, numerous jobs and livelihoods with positive multiply effects along the way. Most importantly, this is a major signal of confidence in, Sri Lankan, in, the, in the Sri Lankan economic reform process, which is an important signal and catalyst for other development partners and investors, as His Excellency just mentioned. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka at its meeting held yesterday decided to reduce the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate of the Central Bank by 25 basis points to 8.25% and 9.25% respectively. Uh, the Monetary Policy Board at the meeting held yesterday decided to reduce the policy interest rate by 25 basis points. Accordingly, a standing deposit facility rate was reduced to 8.25 and standing lending rate, uh, lending facility rates was reduced to 9.25 and the statutory reserve ratio remained unchanged. With the, uh, the cut yesterday, the total reduction in policy interest rates uh, during this easing policy cycle, which started in uh, June 2023, has been uh, 725 basis points. In response to a question posed during the press conference regarding the possibility of the central bank adopting to non-monetary policy strategies to stimulate credit and economic growth, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandaral Virasinghe asserted that the central bank has no intention of implementing non-market-based monetary policies. Uh, I don't think there's, there's no administrative, uh, basically, credit administration is not part of central bank policy now. It's very clearly monetary policy inflation targeting framework which is best for the country is targeting short-term interest rates, and we expect that could be transmitted through market-based mechanism. 
uh, through, the, through the economy. I don't think the uh, central bank has no intention to have non-market-based monetary policy uh, instruments or tools. A government statement said that Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a national anti-corruption agenda which also incorporates findings of a technical assistance report by the International Monetary Fund. Under the plan, Sri Lanka's anti-bribery law would be revised in line with the United Nations Convention Against Corruption and a Financial Action Task Force. Several key measures identified in an IMF governance diagnosis report will be incorporated. A new management plan for the Employees Provident Fund would be prepared and a state-owned enterprise reform policy would be implemented. These include developing an anti-corruption plan for 2025-29, amending the National Audit Act, introducing measures to act against money laundering and proceeds of crime, strengthening provision to file cases against corruption. Implementing a law on state procurement, disclosing tax losses under the Strategic Development Act and suspending the SDA until a transparent framework is published to give incentives. As per the provisional data released by the Sri Lanka Customs, the merchandise export performance in June of 2024 amounted to 1,031.2 million US dollars, recording an increase of 2.58% compared to the month of June of 2023. This was mainly due to the increase in earnings from export of apparel and textiles, tea, rubber-based products, coconut-based products, food and beverages, and spices and concentrates. The export performance in June 2024 increased by 1.97% compared to May 2024. The estimated value of services exports in the month of June 2024 was $323.13 million, increasing 39.05% over the corresponding period of 2023. Consequently, total exports for June 2024, including both merchandise and services, were recorded at $1,354.32 million, increasing 9.42% over the corresponding period of 2023. Export earnings from apparel and textiles increased by 4.22% year-on-year to $446.54 million in June 2024 compared to June 2023. Export earnings from tea, which made up 12% of merchandise exports, increased by 9.18% year-on-year to $121.76 million in June 2024 compared to June 2023. Export earnings from rubber and rubber finished products have increased by 11.8% year-on-year to $82.63 million in June 2024. On monthly analysis, export earnings of coconut-based products increased by 15.54% in June 2024 compared to June 2023. Let's go for a short break. This is the Nike Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The stock market is experiencing an upward trend, marking the second consecutive day of gains after a prolonged period of losses. Both indices recorded increases at the end of today's session, bringing good news to investors. To get the breakdown of today's trading performance, let's connect with Tarusha Ashogar from First Capital Holdings. Yes. Commencing the new week on a positive note, today saw the ASPI thriving into the positive territory, posting a notable gain of 105 points to close at 11,701.64. This uptrend in the market reflects strengthening retailer confidence after the monetary policy rate cut by 25 basis points announced by the CBSL, which provides a clear direction on the interest rates movement. Also, at this low interest rate environment, investors now start to look for alternative investment options to maximize their returns. Following the consecutive panic selling witnessed during the last week, we can see the positive sentiment extended to the banking sector today, with the entire sector experiencing price gains led by Hatton National Bank and Commercial Bank as the largest positive contributors to the SPI. Dominated by retail participation, Turnover recorded at LCAD 591 million, largely contributed by banks and capital goods sectors. Moving on, top gainers for the day include Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamond Non Voting Share, and the Mercantile Shipping Company. While top losers for the day are Tess Agro, 
Milan Developments, Bansai Resorts, Hikarwa. Yesterday, the central bank announced its new policy rates, resulting in a rate decrease. And today, a bill auction was held to gauge the market's response. To provide an analysis on how the policy rate decision impacted the bill auction and to discuss the auction's outcome, we have Nethli Fernando from First Capital Holdings standing by. Thank you. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka held its LKR 160 billion T-bill auction on the 24th of July 2024, where the total offered amount was fully accepted at the auction today. All auction maturities witnessed higher reception during the day, whilst auction yield rates declined by over 12 basis points for the third consecutive week. 91-day maturities witnessed a decline of 41 basis points, which was accepted at a weighted average yield rate of 9.14%. 182-day maturities declined by 44 basis points, registering at 9.34%, while 364-day maturities experienced a dip of 12 basis points, registering at a weighted average yield rate of 9.95%. The main reason for the yield rates rally down was the positivity surrounding the decline in rates at the monetary policy announcement where the central bank reduced the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate by 25 basis points to 8.25% and 9.25% respectively. This decision was taken mainly to, dis uh, to encourage financial institutions to lower their lending rates and make borrowings cheaper to stimulate economic growth and to maintain the inflation target at 5% over the medium term. Though the reduction in monetary policy rates was subtle relative to the previous monetary policy decisions, this rate cut is more of a directional signal by the central bank about its future expectations and the stance. However, the secondary bond market did not reflect the outcome of the monetary policy decision during uh, today as it reflected a mixed sentiment. Addition to that, liquid tenors 2026, 2027 and 2028 entice most of the trades during the day. Gold prices inched up today as market participants assessed the timing and number of U.S. interest rate cuts and awaited U.S. economic data for further clarity on monetary policy. Spot gold was up 0.2% at $2,413.63 per ounce, while gold futures gained 0.3% to $2,414.40. The Fed will cut rates just twice this year in September and December as resilient U.S consumer demand warrants a cautious approach despite easing inflation. Oil prices traded around their lowest level in six weeks today as the Northern Hemisphere gets deeper into summer with limited signs of the expected fuel consumption surge the period usually sees. Brent crude futures for September rose 66 cents or 0.8 percent to 800 $81.66 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude for September increased 65 cents or 0.8% to $77.61 per barrel. Today, the market saw only a slight reprieve as prices snapped three straight sessions of decline on falling U.S. crude inventories and growing supply risks from wildfires in Canada boosted prices. <music> The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the U.S. dollar today after depreciating in the previous days. Accordingly, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar has reduced from 299 rupees and 29 cents to 299 rupees and 7 cents, while the selling rate has also dropped from 308 rupees and 54 cents to 308 rupees and 39 cents. Let's now take a look at the rupees exchange rates against the other global currencies.
going in for a short commercial break now. More updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Evolution Auto is pleased to announce the launch of its first electric vehicle lineup, which is a pioneering joint venture among Sensei Capital Partners, Atman Group, and Sino Lanka Private Limited, designed to transform the sustainable transportation landscape in Sri Lanka. Guided by its mission to bring advanced electric mobility solutions to fruition, Evolution Auto is doubtless poised to change the way Sri Lankans move around mindful of environmental sustainability and national economic growth. This new EV lineup includes Mahindra Trio Passenger and Cargo 3 wheelers that have already gained credibility through their resistant and high performance regime at the electric scooters blending a mix of cutting edge technology and superior performance and lastly the Revolt Electric Bikes most popular electric bike brand in India. Incorporated with the vision to enhance sustainable mobility, Evolution Auto joined hands with some of the most renowned electric automobile brands in the world. These partnerships will ensure that some of the world's chic, most eco-friendly and economical viable electric vehicles find their way into Sri Lanka. The initial public offering of shares of Cable Solutions Limited, which opened yesterday, received broad-based interest from a diverse range of investors. The offer was oversubscribed and subsequently closed at 4.30pm the same day. Managed by Asia Securities Advisor Private Limited, the issue saw subscriptions for 14,666,600 new ordinary voting shares of the company together with the sale of an existing 66,120,000 shares of the company by four of its non-majority shareholders. The company was able to successfully raise 109,999,500 rupees by way of its offers for subscription. Investors will be notified of a fair and transparent basis of allotment together with the date of listing in due course. Founded in 2008, CSL is a subsidiary of ACL Cables PLC and has expanded its footprint across international markets with exports accounting for substantial 94% of its 3.3 billion rupees revenue in the financial year 2023. CPA Australia, one of the world's largest professional accounting organizations in partnership with Daily FT yesterday, hosted a thought leadership forum at the ITC Ratnadipa Hotel, Colombo. The event was titled Digitalization, AI and the Future of Business and was attended by over 100 C-suite executives, senior professionals and other revered guests. The event opened with a welcome address by CPA Australian President, Board Chair and Joan Curtin University Distinguished Professor Dale Pinto, who spoke extensively about technologies such as artificial intelligence, impact on business, and opportunities brought together the accounting industry. Opening the address was followed by a stimulating discussion with a panel of esteemed experts from multiple fields, including Brandex Group Digital Transformation Chief Operating Officer Osha De Sinanayaka, Nihal Hetiarachi and Company Chairman and Managing Partner Dinu Hetiarachi. Former Sri Lanka Securities Exchange Commission Director Chiranthi Kure and CP Australia Director Kaushika Jayalat. The panelists offered thoughtful and detailed responses, ensuring that session was highly informative and enriching for everyone in the audience. In a landmark achievement for Sri Lanka, onlineaccounting.lk has received the ACCA UK's gold accreditation as a learning partner, making it the first Sri Lankan institute to achieve fully online gold accreditation from ACCA Global. The ACCA, the largest professional accounting body in the world, is recognized in over 180 countries. Established in 2019, onlineaccounting.lk is Sri Lanka's pioneering virtual learning platform for professional qualifications. The award was presented at ACCA Sri Lanka head office, attended by the head of ACCA South Asia, Ms. Nelusha Ranasinghe, the CEO of onlineaccounting.lk, Mr. Hashan Waduge, and other representatives from both organizations. Kaspersky Safe Kids has received approved certificates from AV Test and AV Comparatives, which are independent testing organizations, for its outstanding effectiveness in blocking inappropriate content. 
Test proved 100% and 98.1% in successful blocking of adult content on Windows platform respectively. In the AV test research, the solution became twice the only one with blocking adult content in the history of test since 2015. In the AV comparatives 1, the solution became the only one certified out of 5 participants supporting the similar case tests of 2019, 2021 and 2022. The both test institutes conducted their test in accordance with own methodologies. AV test assesses parental control solution against 7,500 websites across 6 languages and 13 categories, namely adult content, violence, weapons and other to evaluate the product's blocking capabilities. AV comparatives tested the solutions against 1,000 adult category websites and 100 child-friendly websites, determining certification criteria of 98% detection rate without false positives, severe bugs, or design flaws. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. In Asian trading today, Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 slipped 1.1% to 39,154.85 with the Japanese yen trading at its highest level in weeks ahead of a Bank of Japan policy decision next week. Hong Kong's Hang Seng lost 0.9% to 17,311.5 led by the Hang Seng Tech Index which sank 1.5%. The Shanghai Composite shared 0.5% to 2,901.95. Australia's S&P ASX 200 edged 0.1% lower to 7,963.70. South Korea's Kospi dropped 0.6% to 2,758.71 as heavyweight Samsung Electronics plunged 2.3%. Wall Street's main indexes ended slightly lower, having given up meager intraday gains in the final minutes of trading as investors switched their focus to the latest earnings from Alphabet and Tesla. U.S. stocks ended slightly lower on Tuesday as investors awaited the latest earnings from Alphabet and Tesla, which reported after the close. The Dow and S&P 500 each dropped more than a tenth of a percent, while the Nasdaq lost a bit less than that. Shares of Tesla, down 2% at the close, dropped further in after-hours trading. The EV maker said its second-quarter margin dipped as price cuts and incentives to spur sagging demand continued to hurt Tesla's bottom line. And shares of Alphabet, marginally higher at the close, rose about 2% after hours. The Google parent beat second-quarter revenue estimates, driven by a rise in digital advertising sales and healthy demand for its cloud computing services. Wall Street's main indexes were little changed during most of the session, having given up meager intraday gains in the final minutes of trading. Helping subdue equity markets were disappointing earnings from household names. UPS, seen as a bellwether for the global economy, slumped 12 percent after missing earnings estimates. The stock closed at its lowest level in four years. General Motors dropped nearly 6.5 percent, despite second quarter results that beat estimates and a higher annual profit forecast. And Comcast lost more than 2.5% after missing its revenue estimates. On the flip side, shares of Spotify jumped 12% after posting a record quarterly profit. Coca-Cola raised its annual sales and profit forecasts as the beverage maker expects to benefit from price hikes and an advertising blitz, mainly in international markets where demand for its sodas and juices has been relatively strong. Amid a slowing U.S. economy, there appears to be at least one thing Americans can't live without, Coca-Cola. The iconic soda brand on Monday topped Wall Street estimates for first quarter revenue and profit, benefiting from resilient demand for its fizzy drinks. And amid still high inflation and a pullback in consumer spending, Coke was even able to hike prices multiple times in order to combat higher commodity and shipping costs. 
The company, which also makes Sprite and Fanta, had previously said it would raise soda prices further in 2023 across the world, but at a moderating pace, despite rival Pepsi hitting a pause on price hikes. Both Pepsi and Coke have faced little or no pushback from consumer price increases thanks to their near domination of the global soda market. Still, Coke said first quarter operating margins slipped due to higher costs, with CEO James Quincy noting that an uncertain consumer environment going forward may take some fizz out of Coke's future profits. Shares of Coca-Cola were up in Monday trading. Well, that is it from us here at the Nightly Business Report. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest updates. Until then, I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Thank you for watching and good night.